Hello, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for joining us today. We have a special guest with us today, uh, Scott Stetzer with uh, STEC. We're going to do a little uh, solid state uh, deep dive. Uh, Scott, one of the things that we uh, run into a lot when we're talking to end users is that there's still a lot of confusion about MLC and SLC. And I, th I thought before we got into some of the real technical stuff, we'd get an overview of what really is the difference really between the, these two technologies, SLC and MLC. Okay. Actually, I think that's a fairly simple question and can be answered with, with basically one symbol here. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you think about it really, there, there's a lot of technology between the two, mm -hmm. but it really comes down to cost. If you're looking for uh, deploying more SSDs, and a lot of the industry wants to put more and more SSDs into this system, the cost of the SSD becomes the challenge. And MLC, because you're storing two bits in every cell location, that's what MLC stands for, multi-layer cell, allows you to get a better cost advantage for deploying that SSD. You get twice the capacity for the same cost, or even better, for the same capacity, about half the cost for the deployment. So MLC, as a technology, allows you to deploy more SSDs or a more cost-effective SSD into your system. So then the concerns, though, with MLC that obviously they, that users will bring up a lot is going to be reliability, right? Correct. And then also um, performance. Uh, so talk about those two issues. Okay, so reliability is one question. I, I think the, the real question really comes down to it. It's probably more in terms of endurance. How long is that SSD going to last, right? Uh, and, you know, typically you want to think about years, but with, with flash technology, it's usually talked about in terms of cycle count, right? So the typical SLC gets about 100K cycles out of it. The typical MLC, what would be called consumer level MLC, today is probably in the 5,000 cycle. And then there's a new variant in the MLC. A lot of the NAND vendors have come out and said, let's make something that lasts a little longer. So they've created something they call EMLC, which gets up to 30K cycles. Okay. Okay. And I'll, I'll go ahead and put this on here. That's EMLC in this case. The challenge with EMLC is what they've done to do this is they've taken the flash and they've slowed it down a little bit. So they're writing to it or erasing it slower than they were with the regular consumer MLC, which is kind of counterintuitive. You, you really buy a flash to go fast. So if you're slowing it down for endurance, then you're, you're kind of going backwards rather than forwards. Okay. So let's, one thing also, let's try and clarify for people what a, uh, exactly a cycle is. It's, uh, yeah. So, uh, so flash is an interesting product. In order to write to it, you actually have to erase it first. So, you know, it's it's kind of a three-cycle process. You're going to first you write to a cell uh, by erasing it. So you erase it and take it down to a zero state. Then you actually program it with the data that you want to have programmed. For SLC, you hit it once with your program state or a, a, a little bit of electricity to actually set the the program or the bit that you want in that cell. With EML, since you're putting two bits, you have to do that twice, right? So it's a three-step process, erase, write, write, in order to program an MLC cell. For SLC, it's erase, write once. And then the fourth step is basically read, and you might read it a bunch of times for every write that you've done. So, Scott, that's very interesting. So what, what we see then typically is this EMLC, MLC, really isolated in many cases to the consumer space. Uh, we're seeing a lot of, you know, even uh, systems guys do some tricky stuff with uh, storage efficiency and deduplication and compression to try to address that stuff. Correct. I know that you guys have done something interesting with a technology called CellCare that really allows this MLC, EMLC class of product to really be considered more uh, uh, reliably or, or consistently in the enterprise. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, so let's set the stage here a little bit first and, and use cycles. So consumer uses, say a laptop use or even in some of the um, you know consumer devices like iPads or iPods, if you think about it, the, the use cycle is pretty low. Especially the writing cycles are pretty low. Think of your average laptop. You power it on, you open a Word file, you spend some time typing on it, and then you save the file. You've written to that drive probably once in about five or ten minutes, give right. or take. So it's a very low duty cycle in terms of writes. In a lot of cases, the drive has probably been powered down waiting for some activity. In an enterprise space, you've got a different set of expectations. In the enterprise space now, you're powered on constantly. Your duty cycles are very high. They're very, basically, they're constant. 
right? And your read and write cycles are anywhere from 30% writing to 50% writing, depending on the application. So it's constant activity. So you can see where the question of endurance becomes really important to an enterprise customer is how long is it going to last if I actually just put it into my normal file server or SAN based system, mm -hmm. right? And especially if you think about it, it's a performance device. So you're going to want to use it for performance activity, so you're going to use it a lot. So to that end, SLC has been the real king in this because it lasts a long time. 100,000 cycles gets you more than five years, some, somewhere upwards of eight or ten years in today's life cycles in an enterprise space. And that's why we're really seeing that, especially uh, up until recently anyways, is the pr predominant uh, type of technology in the enterprise systems, right? Correct. So the, and, and again, the challenge is back to cost, right? How can we deploy more of these for a more cost-effective equation to get more servers out there, more storage systems out there, and more adoption of these high-performance devices? If you think about it, time is money. Mm -hmm. If you can get more done in a shorter period of time, you're actually saving money rather than spending money. Sure. And that's where SSDs really come into play. Okay. So let's go back to the MLC equation now, and let's talk about these. Perfectly acceptable for a consumer device or even a laptop device, the MLC technology drives. As you move into the enterprise space, you want something that's going to last a minimum of five years under those heavy duty cycles. Now, EMLC is better than regular consumer MLC simply because it's got a lot more cycles to it. But if you think about it, under a heavy workload, even 30,000 cycles is probably going to get you somewhere to about a year and a half. Uh, to three years worth of life depending on how you use it, mm -hmm. right? That's not quite good enough in that enterprise space where you want at least five years or longer worth of endurance out of it under a heavy duty workload. So we've created this technology that we've deployed to actually extend the life of MLC or even EMLC technology and take it from that 5K or 30K cycle range all the way out to as much as 60K cycles. That'll get you five to six years worth of life out of that drive. Right. At those costs. At, at this cost structure, right. that is correct. And that's cell care. And that is the cell care technology. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Okay. So cell care actually is a set of technologies. It's not one thing that we're going to do with the drive. It's a whole different set of things that's going to happen inside of the drive. And all of this is actually being enabled by the controller inside of the drive. If you think about an SSD, it really isn't about the flash. It's really about the controller that's managing the flash. And the word managing is very important. Flash is actually a fairly static device. It, you read to it and you write from it, but what's actually handling the activity on and off that SSD is the controller, mm -hmm. right? Or the processor, or however you want to phrase that. That controller is managing talking to the host, bringing data in, writing it to the flash, where leveling the cells in the flash to keep you from wearing out any particular location before any other location. And since STEC designs their own controllers, we do our own ASIC technology, all designed in-house. We're actually able to design those controllers to have the ability to talk to the inside of the flash chip. Okay. Let's, let's sketch out what, what the inside of one of these drives look like. Okay. I think that that'll uh, give people a good visual, right? So, I mean, obviously there's probably a lot of ways to implement it, but essentially we're talking about a board that's going to go either... Uh, on a PCIe card or in uh, an SSD form factor type of thing, something yep. like that. And we're going to have a, uh, an, a, a controller there, and then we're going to have some number of rows of flash memory. And, and basically, this is the guy that you're talking about is controlling all the wear leveling and things like that. Right. And, and if you look at it, there's usually an interface, which is usually a connector. Off, usually, he's on the, the long end, but there's a connector here that actually hooks up to that host you know, PC and he's connected here for moving data in and out of that PC. Right. What we do then is that goes into the controller. There's usually a little RAM in there as well as buffer space. And then what you'll actually see is, is there's actually a multiple chips in here. And we're going to run different channels out to all of those different chips so we can parallelize all of the access. That's how you get a lot of speed out of it. So flash is inherently fast. But because we can put multiple channels together, we can even make it faster. And will there typically be just one controller inside the bo uh, a board like this, or will you, would you guys have multiple controllers? In our case, we're always using one ASIC to control the device. Okay. And that ASIC has the host interface on it, whether it's SAS, SATA, or PCIe. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen some other designs that will use more than one controller, depending on how they've architected their, their design. Okay. Okay. All right, so, uh, so then from here, let's talk about, so I think a lot of what you mentioned so far, the, the wear leveling and things like that, is stuff that I think we now expect any flash controller to do. Is that fair? It, it would be fair to say that every flash controller or every flash drive needs to enable wear leveling. 
Okay. Okay. So then, where does the the cell care group of or family of technologies mm -hmm. uh, come in to really take this to the next level? Okay. So again, it's really about increasing the endurance of the inside of the flash. So in, actually, instead of looking at the chip from the outside, if, if you were to actually zoom in on this, an individual flash chip is very interesting. He's got a whole set of columns and rows. And when you get right down to it, a particular cell is an intersection of a column and row, and you're writing to that. So Scott, how does that change things over the life of the flash then? So if, if you think about it, the individual cell is, is what's actually being worn out as you're erasing it and writing to it. So what the real thing is, it's about reaching inside that chip and managing that flash over time. And, and again, it's really about hitting it with erase, hitting it with write activity. Again, that's two writes for every erase, and then all the read activity that you put to it. The key is to minimize that or soften that in such a way that the wear out on that cell goes a lot slower, right? So the cell care technology, the ability we have by building our own controllers to get to the level of managing the flash chip themselves, we can actually reach inside that chip, start to adjust over time how we're actually writing to that cell, and slow down that wear out rate and, and increase the endurance at least twofold to fourfold or higher. Again, it's from 5,000 cycles up to 30,000 cycles okay. or 60,000 cycles. So then, and, and most uh, controller guys, and, and, my, and as we know in the industry, most, most people put this stuff together. They buy a controller someplace, they buy flash or someplace, put their logo on it, and you know, boom, right? Yeah. The, in, in most situations, though, the, the controllers are just blasting everything. Everything's being created equal. Right. What you're doing is putting some priority or, or special treatment around different types of activities? No, actually, the, from the host and the writing to the flash is all the same, right? Okay. You're putting data in, you're taking data out. What we're doing is reaching in behind the flash itself to the individual cells themselves and actually changing the way we're using those cells in order to maximize the life, right? And the key is we're going to do that over the life of the drive. So we'll treat it one way at the beginning of life and we'll be treating it a little differently at the end of life in order to level up that wear out rate. Right. Okay, and that's how you get that con consistency. Consistently the across the life gotcha. of the drive, exactly. Okay. Excellent stuff. Scott, thank you very much for coming in today. George, thank you. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Scott Stetzer with STEC. Uh, I want to thank him for joining us today, and I also, of course, thank STEC for sponsoring this video. Please join in next time. Thank you.